Hi, and welcome to the Movable Bar Chords, Shapes, and Practice. Uh, this is in the intermediate section of the program. Um, when you're playing bar chords, uh, the bar means you take your first finger and you're going to lay it over either all six strings, five, four, three, or two strings. Uh, in this situation, these movable bar chord shapes, the ones I'm going to be showing you, we're going to be posting and that means the root of the, the note of the chord is on the, the sixth string or the fifth string. So you post from either of these two low strings. Therefore, the bar is going to either cover all six or five of the strings, or sometimes you'll have a third finger here. So let's get into this. Um, a word of warning, um, bar chords are definitely harder. You can see I'm using more, like a, this is a, a Taylor T5. It's a little bit easier to, to press down than an acoustic guitar. Um, it's, it's fine. Um, it, for acoustic, obviously, but since I'm going to be doing many of these videos in a row, I'm using an electric, it's easier to press down over long, long periods of time. Um, so just be careful with your pressure of your hand. Um, I always say angles, not pressure. So you don't want to just sit there and squeeze as hard as you can. You, you change your angle. You know, you don't, you don't want to do this. You know, you know, five pounds. I see people kind of lifting their elbow. You got to be relaxed. Always try to stay relaxed. It may not sound perfect for a while, so don't worry about that. The idea is to get the shape in there and freeze your hand in that shape and be able to move those shapes around like that. See, I know that that's a bar chord. I can just place it down. You have to train your fingers to freeze in these shapes. The first one is the root on the sixth string, major bar chord shape. And you're going to be posting from the sixth string. We're going to start at G, which is the third fret. And it's a full fret bar at the third. And then we've got five, four, here. On. Fifth string, fourth string is what I meant, and third string. So here's your shape. Now you'll notice that this shape looks like an E major chord down here. But because we have the nut, we don't have to do the first finger. We would use this shape. And this is where a lot of times people get confused. So I don't want to make it any harder than it is. But this shape is movable. The only thing you have to do is place the bar there and move that accordingly. If you did this, obviously that wouldn't work because you'd have some open strings ringing that wouldn't fit with the chord. In E, it's fine. You want to do it at G, but you got to place this over everybody. It sounds like that. Now to make that a minor chord, you lift up the second finger. That lowers the third of the chord. We can talk about theory at another point. Put the, th uh, the second finger back down, lift up the little finger, that makes it a seven chord, G7. So we have G major, G minor, and G7. They're all listed on your sheet. Those are movable chords. So if I went to the fifth fret, it would be A major, A minor, A7. No big deal. Now, you can also do these chords on, with the root on the fifth string. The shapes are different. So the major now is this one. You can either Put the first finger on the C note. You can bar the third finger over the next three strings. We're not going to play the high string or the low string. Or you can use the fourth finger. You'll see me doing either. It just doesn't matter. Most people say third. Sometimes I use four. It just depends on the situation. So let's just stay with third for a moment. There's your C major chord root on the fifth string. Now, when you want to do a C minor chord root on the fifth string, you have to make the same shape as the root on the sixth string major chord, but it's over one string and it becomes minor. It sounds like this. And you'll see, if you visualize that little shape there, down in this position, that's A minor, but you would have fingered it like this. If you finger it like this, put your first finger at the nut, that looks like the root on the fifth string minor chord. Now there's B minor, C minor, D minor, E minor. Same thing. Now, if we go back to our C position, we're going to make the seventh chord, C7. Full bar, third finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string, fourth finger on the fifth fret of the second string, and there's your C7 chord. So now we have major, minor, and seventh posting from the sixth string and posting from the fifth string. Now what I did was I put some practice progressions in here for you. And I'm going to play through each of these briefly, and this is what I'd like you to do uh, with a metronome, preferably, to get yourself 
accustomed to switching around. So here we go. C. I put a rest on beat 4 to facilitate the change for you. Try to do it at 60 and then 70, 80. You know how we do on our metronome here. The next one, number 2, is D minor. These are still all on the 6th string here. We've got this one. G minor. Back to D minor. A7. You see how fast my hand's going? on the end of the beat. Try to make your moves rhythmic. Stay in time better. Now, posting on the fifth string, we've got E minor. string chords. So it starts with a C, and then it goes to an F, and then A minor, and then G7, like this. up the rhythms now and, and put two chords in one measure, make it a little bit more interesting for you. So we've got G, and that's an open chord obviously. swing pattern in here and I'm using some seventh chords and we've got um, B flat seven E flat seven and then F7 on the sixth string G7 on the sixth string so we've got root on the fifth string and then root on the sixth string it sounds like this progressions I put a rest on beat 4. Sometimes I'll put a rest on the end of 4. Um, but sometimes it's just a quarter note. Even if it's an even if it's listed as an as an eighth note and you have to play the end of 4 or it's listed as a quarter note you think oh I got to let that ring out. You don't have to be so literal about those types of things. For instance, I don't know if you noticed but when I did uh, this move from the E flat 7 down to the F7, I went 1 and 2 And on that last and, the end of four, instead of trying to play that, I used that as my move. And I did the motion here with my pick, but it simultaneously I did the slide, got myself ready, like this. And it sounds like a... becomes like a rhythmic little uh, part, and it sounds good, and it gets you down there at the same time. So don't you don't have to be so literal... Sometimes you do, but in this particular case, when you're trying to get these big giant bar chords moving them around, the and of four is a great place. You can drop that out or make a percussive sound. And how do you do that? Well, you just let go of the, the pressure. You don't let go altogether. Obviously, it would sound like the open strings. Let go of the pressure. See, I'm squeezing here. If I let go of the pressure, sounds like that. As I'm moving, if I do that, now I've got... 
not doing this, I'm not tense or anything like that. Try to practice in front of a mirror if you, if you have to. And if you feel pressure in your thumb, which you probably will, just stop, m you know, move it around, stretch your arm out, take a break. Uh, bar chords take a long time. Um, you really have to, the last thing I'll say is, on these two low strings, it's extremely important to know the names of these notes. And I do have handouts and sheets that are, uh, you can download them. It's an F and a G and an A and a B. I focus on the natural notes and then all the sharps and flats will appear. <laughs> Obviously, it's what's not there. But if you focus on these natural notes first, on these two low strings, that's going to really help you out when you're looking at these chord charts that we're going to be working on in the future. So these are the movable bar chord shapes and some practice progressions. And then we're going to take this even further. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.